Six differences are becoming very important. The NIH has now mandated that all grants include both sixes because we can't study one sex and then assume it's true in the other. And this has come up in a lot of uh, other uh, situations. It started, some of it was even the dose of aspirin to prevent heart attacks. It was based on the dose for males and then with females it was different. And then also the dose of Ambien came up. The dose of Ambien, just a sleep aid, is too high for women. Uh, when, when women take that dose, they feel really uh, drugged and, and, and drowsy the next day. They get in their cars, they go to work. And so some of these things came up and said, we really need to tailor our, our drug development and, and not assume that all the things that are optimized for one sex are true for the other. So what was happening, that's the trial lo trials level, and that's, that's, that's being done, and that's good. For safety reasons, safety and efficacy. It may work better in one than the other, or the dose may differ, or the toxicity may differ in, in one versus the other. Now at the basic science level, people were still doing, like a lot of the neuroscience was all being done in male rats and mice. And then, then these findings would come through and they say, great, this is the way to fix the disease. But they didn't do those studies in the females. Or some of the MS stuff actually did it in the females and they didn't do it in the males. And, and the view of the NIH now is that, and they're right, is that we have to know, we can't just assume you know, what's true in one sex is for the other, and so you have to do, in every NIH grant, you have to consider both sexes. It's called sex as a biologic variable. It, it's got to be considered in all of these experiments. And my view is it's a win-win because you'll either find out that whatever you found is, is not only true in one, it's true in the other, so now you know, your, your finding is even bigger or you'll find that it's, that it's not true in the other and then you'll have a sex difference. And, and that's a good thing actually to discover sex differences in the sense that you can then f figure out what makes the disease better or worse because it's obviously being controlled by either sex hormones or sex chromosomes and th these are the sex differences. So in MS what we've done focusing on MS. Sex differences were known for a long time whereby females are more susceptible to MS than males. It's about three to one. And also uh, males actually do, do worse. Once they get the disease, it's odd how they're less susceptible and they have a less inflammatory response, but when males get the disease they didn't have worse disability progression. So with NMS, there's two very important things. One is, why do females get the disease more often than men? If we understood that, we could, ha we could go in, particularly in females, to try to prevent that. The other thing is, when males get MS, they do worse with disability progression. If we understood that, <clears throat> we could get, come in with a treatment to then try to block whatever was making males worse. So it's, it's relevant to both sexes, just to study the other. You just learn when you know more and can compare them.